Well, I just don't reckon that, you know, we should be using the music if we don't know that we have the rights to it, is what I'm saying. Because we're going to be showing people a new console, a bunch of games that they'll be able to play on it. We've got a, a whole bunch of shit planned for this presentation. And if we drop the fucking ball by getting lawyers involved right off the bat, because this is identifiably the BBC News thing. You can tell it's got the, the seconds matching up and all of that shit. Well, I, I, it's not my problem that you haven't seen the BBC News. It's available globally. You're able to watch it anywhere in the world. So, And even if you weren't, you get a VPN. You work in tech. You work in video games. You should know how to do that. It's, I'm telling you, it's the BBC News thing. And if we're going to do a whole presentation where we're showing a console, a bunch of games, all that sort of shit, we shouldn't get... Lo- what do you mean they can hear me? I'm live now? Oh, f- fucking why didn't you tell me? Jesus Christ. <clears throat> World premiere. Good evening around the world and welcome to the Filthy Casuals presentation of the future of video games. Now that you've seen our new console that you can play anywhere in 2020, let's show you a game that you'll be playing. And let's just say this one will rail you. Coming this spring, it's Model Train Simulator. Finally, you'll be able to take your obsession with trains and abstract it even further by virtually simulating your small-scale simulation of large-scale trains. You'll be able to spend hundreds of dollars and even higher numbers of hours on trains, taking away the time you could have spent helping to cook for your children with the food you were barely able to afford. How much did you spend on fake grass this month? Tell me or it's over. They're all here. The Orient Express. The Flying Scotsman. A blue one. What's wrong with buying the blue one? We don't have any money, Jerry, not with you spending it all on trains. I know we need to pay our bills, but this makes me happy. Is that not valuable too? Not as valuable as water, Jerry, or as valuable as me, as your children. With our real-time construction feature, you'll have the opportunity to reflect on how much of your life has been destroyed by what you called enthusiastic hobbying, but what she called childish avoidance techniques and unhealthy escapism. Building in progress. soon model train simulator on ios so you can finally take your trains with you wherever you go even if you leave the house the trains never will they'll stick by you hello what the fuck do you mean your kids heather they're my kids as well you can't be coming into and soon our vr expansion so that you can reach out and really no longer be able to hold your kids <laughs> I'm fucking up the whole inside of these. <laughs> Model train simulator. You did it to yourself. Boy, that sure does look like a steamer. <laughs> oh, fucking now over to this guy to explain about a new rhythm game. Here at Filthy Software, we grew up playing games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band spending hours with the volume cranked all the way up, a plastic peripheral in our hands, playing along to some of the best rock and pop music blaring from the speakers. 
We believe that the rhythm game is long overdue for a comeback. Imagine being able to drum along to Uptown Funk or shred out to the hits of Imagine Dragons. We wanted to bring that experience to the gamers of 2020. As it turns out, those songs are very, very expensive to license, but we're confident that we have cooked up the next best thing. In royalty-free rock band, players will take to the stage and jam along to some of the cheapest and most readily available song loops that we were able to find on the first page of Google results. Hits like Rollerblades, Dance Club, Audio Jungle, Fun Day, Jazzy Night and Tropical Funky are all here waiting for you to master. Royalty Free Rock Band launches this summer alongside the Grenda Guitar and Zamaha Drums peripherals. And if you pricks from Fender and Yamaha want to take us to court again, well, be my guest because I'll tell you right now, I have had an absolute gut full of corporate pigs like you trying to tell me what is and is not public domain. Art is for the people and I do not understand why I'm legally forbidden from making a sculpture of Mickey Mouse having sex with the Michelin Man in order to work through my issues. No, I'm not going to do another take. Zama ha ha ha. Now what console launch would be complete here in the 90s without a movie tie-in game? I'll leave you in the capable hands of a certain famous someone. <laughs> yeah, I was Wolverine. Ah, fuck. Oh, hello, my name's Hugh Jackman and I'm here to tell you about the newly released Swordfish the movie The Game. It's a brand new video game adaptation of the film Swordfish from 2001, remember? It had me, Hugh Jackman, uh, there was Halle Berry, there was John Travolta with the little goatee. There was that scene where I had to do the hacking even though I was, uh, <laughs> you know, receiving a little bit of... Uh, well, you remember the scene, right? I was getting a blowjob while having to do a job. Anyway, I'm going to tell you about all the features of Swordfish and why they... Why they're going to make Swordfish an incredible game. Um, we've got a, uh, a single-player campaign is the big one. It, uh, it's a, oh, a story-driven game. Um... Uh, it's got oh, combat. Oh, it's got combat and it's hard. Combat's hard. It's not easy. Oh, there's a bunch of uh, DLC. <laughs> DLC missions. Oh, we're going to be putting a bit of a price on them. I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole bunch of... Um, uh, multiplayer co-op missions and uh, <laughs> you're going to be able to do them with your friends very very friendly we've got a bunch of swordfish uh, uh, pre-order bonuses so make sure you pre-order because you don't want it to come out too early oh! it's out now Anyway, so the, the pre-order, it's too late to pre-order. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm done. That's it. That's the game. You get it. Wow, Hugh Jackman. Now we take you over to the Filthy Casuals marketing department and whatever this guy is doing. Oh. Oh, oh g'day. I'm from Filthy Casuals marketing and I am very, very excited to present to you our new AAA launch title. Now, we're not like other companies that just drip feed you information over the course of several months. Oh, speaking of drip, that is, oh, that is, that is a drip and a half. Oh, boy. Anyway, once you see this game, you will agree that we've got this whole presentation in the bag. Which reminds me, I have got to call Davo. I'm down to like two, three bags, maybe? Anyway, this is the jewel in the crown of our launch lineup and you will not be able to resist playing it. Speaking of not being able to resist a lineup, where is my credit card? I gotta rack some shit up. <laughs> anyway, over to the uh, technical guy to take you through the gameplay, the visuals, and the whole fucking game. <laughs> 
thank you so much for the introduction. Yes, I am one of the lead developers on this title. And today we will be uh, talking you through the opening scenes and uh, levels of this exciting new launch title. We'll be commentating over the top of, of course, the lush graphics and the exciting gameplay that we'll be presenting to you in this our marquee launch title. We're of course on the home screen here. This is the developer home screen, of course. This is not the consumer menu. Uh, when the console ships, it will of course have many more pop-ups, confusing links, and advertising for promotional DLC tie-ins. Let's navigate to the launch title. And without further ado, let us launch the marquee AAA title that will kick off the Filthy Casuals console generation. Right, did no one uh, prepare this ahead of time? I suppose this is the first time it has launched uh, connected to uh, external public network. Um, I guess we'll just keep uh, commentating. Yep. So of course, this is the download update screen. It's rendered in full 8K resolution. You can see the pristine design of the interface, the glowing cancel button, the OK button right next to it there. Um, all purpose built for premium user experience. Let's just um, hit OK on uh, this and that's quite a large download. Um, an expansive prologue section um, has been presented here to the gamer and here we are we're into the game of course this loading bar is presented using advanced ray tracing technology you can currently see 17,000 triangles on screen and here is the first stage of the game we're here in uh, um, one percent it's a really uh, nice way to ease the gamer into the game's mechanics here we are in stage two it's slightly larger of course um, you'll notice um, the one has changed to a two and the small grey box is uh, uh, twice as big as it was before. Appears to have gone back to 1% there. And here is one of the random encounters the game features. If you are familiar with JRPGs, you will have seen this mechanic before. And this is an exciting battle early in the game. Let's just navigate to the OK button and that will take us out of the error and back to the home screen. Of course, we will simply uh, launch the game again. Ah, this is the main enemy of this game, of course. The Corrupted. Let's just leave it there, shall we? Oh, it looks great. <laughs> Pre-order now. Which is what I should have done before this lockdown hit. <laughs> All my stuff stuck in Guatemala. I like cocaine. Moving on. Hi. I'm Ron Digit, and today I'm excited to share an exclusive first look at a game that we have been working on with the legendary Hideo Kojima. As the lead character designer on this exciting and groundbreaking game, I've been fortunate enough to be working very closely alongside Mr. Kojima to help bring his unparalleled vision to life. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the character designs I've worked on and how they were revised and greatly improved with the input of Mr. Kojima in order to give you all an insight into what it's like to be mentored by a true iconoclast. First up, we have my first draft sketch of the protagonist, Eliza Campbell, a silent commando with a mysterious past. Mr. Kojima was mostly positive about my design, but he had a couple of significant changes. He quite rightly pointed out that if we are to believe that this soldier is capable of intense physical feats, then we need to be able to see that the area around her chest and lungs has a large capacity. And I think fans will agree that it's this kind of attention to detail that makes the great man such an auteur. Next up is my original design for a mech that Eliza pilots in combat. Mr. Kojima took one look at this design and said through his translator, where is the pilot meant to sit? <laughs> to say that I was embarrassed by this oversight would be the understatement of the century. Kojima-san grabbed the nearest fountain pen and hastily made the following adjustments. Finally, I have one more piece of futuristic technology from the game that I can share with you. 
An all-terrain vehicle that Eliza will use to traverse the dystopian setting of this game. The Bazoomba-mobile, which Mr Kojima made the following changes to while sweating profusely and panting non-stop. The translator was out to lunch while this exchange took place, so I'm left to speculate about the exact justification for these changes, but no doubt they're rock solid and would hold up to rigorous scrutiny. I wish I could show you more from this exciting new game, but alas, you'll have to wait and experience it for yourselves when Hideo Kojima's new masterpiece, Giant Wobbling Titties, launches on the PlayStation 5 in 2022. At Filthy Casuals, we've also been partnering with famous YouTubers, including in the popular genre of toy unboxings. Let's travel to one of their man caves right now and see what's up with Peter Pan. Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Now today I'll be uh, unboxing the latest Funboy Toy Crate. It's a subscription crate service. And uh, this month's one, like all of them, uh, is a mystery box. So I'm as excited as you are to see what's inside. Here we go. Uh, there's a... Uh, the welcome note from the company. Uh, here we go, just read this out to you. Bit of a long one. <laughs> Hi Ben, thanks for ordering this month's Fun Boy Toy Crate. Before listing what you will find inside this month's crate, let's list what you won't find here. Okay. You won't find the Witcher 3 Graphite Yennefer statuette as promised online. I was looking forward to that. Uh, you won't find a t-shirt that fits you properly. Um, or is usable for anything except sleeping in. And even then, only sleeping alone. You won't find anything except disposable crap. Cheap plastic products churned out of dangerous factories in troubled third world countries. You won't find the same feeling you used to get when you unwrapped that one birthday present your parents could afford that year. That same Overwhelming joy when you open the blister pack of Pokemon cards on Christmas morning. You won't find your first love again. You won't find the chance to tell her you're sorry. You won't find the same energy you used to have, the, the same passion for your hobbies. You won't find photos of your wife and child because you wanted to spend money on video games and figurines rather than a crib and you never got married. You won't find close friends, only acquaintances you met online. You won't find excuses for your loneliness. You won't find an explanation for why you were called gifted as a child, but now you're only called every now and then by a father who gave up on his boy ever becoming a man. You won't find a way to convert money into nostalgia, into fulfillment. You won't find happiness. You will find, however, a fully posable Zelda statue! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, uh, thank you, fun boy toy crate! No, thank you, young boy or old man, I'm not sure. Next, we go over to the developers of Fate Song, who are here after the game's troubled launch to set things straight for the path forward. Hello, my name is Dennis Themanache, and I'm the creative director on Fate Song. We here at Fate Song know that when Fate Song launched, it wasn't everything that Fate Song fans expected it to be. To those fans, we say, we've heard you, we've read your comments, and we've received your anthrax in the mail. That is why today I'm here to outline our roadmap for the future of Fate Song and how we intend to make the game the experience that it should have always been. Firstly, starting this week, we will be releasing the co op multiplayer add on. This will allow you and your friends to party up and complain about the game together in online groups of up to four players. Two months after this, in late November, we will be releasing patch 1.2, which will only be described as containing bug fixes. People will not be able to ascertain what we have actually changed. Starting in the new year, the January update will add much awaited microtransactions to the game, allowing Fate Song players to buy new and unique armor for their characters, who up until this point the game hadn't been good enough for them to form an attachment to in any way, shape, or form. 
Our microtransaction system will be almost entirely unregulated, allowing a drug cartel based generally somewhere South America-ish but not in a specific enough region that a depiction of it would really cause anyone any offence, to acquire the names, addresses and credit card numbers of every single one of our players. This drug cartel, known simply as Drug Brothers 2000, will make millions of dollars both from our players' information and by using our still completely unregulated in-game store as a money laundering service. In the spring, we will be releasing an update that finally hides our users' private information and cuts off the Drug Brothers from using our game to launder their money. They will not be happy about this. In April, whilst walking home, a black car with heavily tinted windows will begin following me. I leave my headphones in, but turn my music off. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. I know something's not right here. My pace quickens, and the car begins to speed up. I dart into an alleyway and break into a sprint as I hear tyres squeal behind me. Car doors open and hurried footsteps follow. I dare not look back, but I can hear clearly in the threatening march of my pursuers that there are several of them. Heavy, thudding steps of large men, the aggressive, metallic clutter of weapons attached to their bodies. I've been training for this moment. I spin around. All right, you mother... Fuckers who's first, I know Krav Maga! I'm immediately and easily knocked out by one punch. The world turns dark and formless. My eyes shut as a free man, and I sink into the abyss of unconsciousness as their captive. We will also be increasing the co-op play account to eight. I awake in a cold, damp stone cell. Natural light touches not a corner of this rotting cave. For 11 weeks I will live in this hellhole, surviving only on the rats and insects I can capture from within my chain bindings, and drinking my urine both as my only means of survival and my only recreational activity. After my perception of the flow of time has been abandoned by my crumbling mind and this torture has dragged on for beyond eternity, the cell door swings open. A figure strides in, imposing, menacing, handsome. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? It means to do the same thing, over and over again, expecting a different result. That was on my uh, word of the day calendar today. Thought I'd share it with you, you know. Not the world's most interesting word, you know. Insanity. Most people know what that means, I feel like. Also, I don't know if I agree even with the definition there. I don't think you can narrow down the entire spectrum of mental health, and it is a spectrum, into such a sort of boiled down phrase. It doesn't seem right to me. To be honest, the whole calendar has been a little bit disappointing. The word of the day, the other day, was calendar. You know, I mean, how am I meant to have ended up owning this calendar without knowing the word calendar? What did they ask for in the shop? You know, their book? And they, and, they, and they tricked me? It's not how it went down. Actually, my wife gave it to me as a, as a present. That's why it's still on my desk, but it is taking up space, really, to be honest. Speaking of which, we're going to get rid of you. We need this room back. Uh, we're going to have a ping pong tournament, and we're going to put the table here. Uh, make it this regular cave into sort of a man cave, huh? Yeah, so we're going to kill you. Uh, nobody's paid the ransom, so it's time for you to go. Unless you want to join in with the ping pong tournament. We actually have, we have an odd number of people right now, so we could use you if you want to do it. It's going to be fun. It's not a super competitive vibe, you know, it's more of a uh, social event. If ping pong is in your thing, I kind of get that, you know. I don't like snooker. I like pool, but uh, snooker, you know, they, they, it's too ordered. They tell you, oh, do the red ball, then the green ball, then the red ball again, the blue ball, you know, it's like, let me do my thing. You tell me how I did afterwards, you know, don't box me in. So anyway, uh, basically either we kill you or we, uh, we play ping pong. Which do you prefer? I beat every single one of the drug brothers at ping pong and they release me. Upon returning home, I start a successful shrimping business. My mother dies of cancer. I have awkward sex with a woman named Jenny, go running for a few years somehow, and I meet Richard Nixon, Elvis Presley, and Gary Sinise. In June, we're adding a battle royale mode. Well, everybody, that's our show. Thank you for watching, and oh, just one more thing. We are, of course, not 
any of the people we were pretending so skillfully to be. We are, in fact, Tommy Daslow, Ben Vanell, and Adam Knox. We do a regular podcast every single week about video games, but uh, we try to be a bit fun about it. We're going to do a, a bonus podcast at the end here that you can uh, have a watch of and then listen to the rest of on our Bandcamp page. All of the links are visible on screen the entire time. If you like what we do, go and uh, subscribe to our podcast to get more of it. Thanks heaps for, for being here for this. Good morning, video games. Welcome to another premium bonus special extra episode of Filthy Casuals. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Tommy Dasselow and with me as always... Ben Vanell here, Tommy, and joining us, rounding out the trio, it is as always... I'm not normally on camera, but my name's Adam Knox. <laughs> in one version of this, maybe not the one that you're listening, well, definitely not the one you're listening to, but if mm. you're watching it, you can see us. Look at that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You've been introduced to the concept of video. It's a special <laughs> day for you, Adam. <laughs> I really don't like it. You know how, like, uh, if you put, like, a crow in front of a mirror, it'll start pecking it, or, like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Orangutans, I think, do that. They don't peck it, but, you know, they beat it up. <laughs> I hate looking at yes. myself like this. <laughs> I need You're a haircut well, Adam, and I need to lose like, about uh, 180 kilos. Huh? <laughs> Adam, if you at any point you don't like what you're seeing in the uh, on the screen there, you could just use that elevator that you're sitting on and just, like, kind of... <laughs> Uh, be slowly lowered out of frame. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be so easy for me to do, and you definitely wouldn't be able to hear a whole bunch of me going like Argh! as I go down. But I'll. Why is there I'll so much clattering in this elevator? Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, boy. Some. Oh, <laughs> my voice actually did waver a little bit. Yes. <laughs> 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 mm. Sorry, boy. You'll have to wait for the uh, podcast a little. The elevator's been called down. And that's as yeah, far down as I can yeah, go. Yeah, great. <laughs> Did he get is. stuck halfway between two floors there? What's going on? <laughs> you ever seen Being John Malkovich? That's the building I live in. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh. So let that be a lesson to you folks. If you are tuning into the audio version of this after the fact, mm-hmm. you could have uh, you could have caught this uh, as a live video presentation at PAX and been treated to some uh, some physical clowning work that would make the great Gollier um, extraordinarily <laughs> jealous, but let that be a lesson for the future. Always take the video option if it's presented to you. That's Don't right, be a miss- coward and just wait for the... Look, he's playing with his headphones. <laughs> I, want to, I want to point out, I'm wearing two sets of headphones, one to monitor mm-hmm. the recording audio and one to hear you. So, you know, it's these little visual behind-the-scenes thing you get. Mm. When you're watching this, possibly for the first time, and are being immediately put off by our looks and <laughs> That's personalities. That's right. Yeah. If you are yeah. watching this on PAX Live, uh, thanks for joining us. We're an Australian yeah. comedy podcast. We talk about video games, and this is our first day. We've never used any of this equipment before. Where the concept of video <laughs> is brand new to us, and we don't have any chemistry. No, that is the one thing we do clearly have <laughs> uh, in spades. Uh, but yeah, what are we here to do today? To do. <laughs> Today, boys. Well, I think people uh, we're just here saw to a test little our taste. webcams and make sure that they work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, we're here to do all the general podcast. Like, there's there's a specific thing we're going to do, but we're going to do the typical white male podcast things of talking over each other as loudly as possible. Uh, <laughs> I intend to bring up DC versus Marvel at some point. Sure. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to tell yep. it like it is. I'm going to lay it out there. And really get those PC police to come and fucking raid my house. Mm, um, good. <laughs> <laughs> but mainly we you, we we did some stuff before that was about E3, and we're going to fix mm. E3. That's the idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. And Done. Uh, yeah, again, just to uh, just to fill the uh, audio only listeners in. Um, and you, you people watching the video will be able to have seen this. Ben and I are broadcasting from our apartments. Uh, and meanwhile, Adam appears to be um, broadcasting from some kind of Arctic wasteland. There is <laughs> nothing but white behind him. Yeah. He appears to be in the middle of some kind of snowstorm, mm-hmm. um, not dressed appropriately for it at all. But um, but thanks for somehow finding equipment in the middle of um, in the middle of Antarctica. Uh, no, how are people going to know that I'm a serial killer if they come to my house and I have stuff on the walls? I have to keep them <laughs> blank, like my eyes and my personality. 
You look like you're recording from the the void in the Matrix where they're like they have all the gun racks slide in. Is Morpheus just just out of frame? (laughs) We're gonna need microphones. (laughs) <laughs> yes Here it is I didn't even bother taking it all the way out of frame <laughs> It's too uh, long in the tooth So yeah people E3 mm. That's my problem with it mm. And everyone's problem mm. with it Like it almost wasn't going to happen this year 2020 anyway mm. People mm. were already talking about whether or not to continue with that version of E3 With the people running it It was already having a bit of a death knell sort of a thing sound. And now, with everything that's happened this year, surely it's done, right? Mm. There's a gap there. There's a void, like I'm living in, to be yes. filled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the very least, it's like, you know, it, I think it's the case for a lot of things. Having this year off is um, is the uh, the opportunity for some kind of uh, soft reset, which mm-hmm. I think is where... Where we come in, and uh, hopefully the uh, the boffins in there at E3, the brains trust mm-hmm. in at that organisation. Hopefully they get their hands on this. Um, if you you know if you're someone who's paid to get the audio of this, and uh, you happen to have some kind of link to the organisers of E3, please, we're we're more than happy with you illegally pirating this and uh, sending mm. them a copy because I think mm. there's going to be some very wonderful ideas. Uh, coming up in the next however however many minutes that uh, that surely will make E3 better for the developers and for most importantly us the audience specifically <laughs> us the three yes. of us yeah 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 our tastes more um, uh, men's razor brands doing um, stupid product placements with mascots and uh, lots of awkward yes. uh, humor yeah right. That is the one yep, thing they can yep. take from uh, the Game Awards that I wanted to bring up anyway. So let's do that. Mm-hmm. Note number yes. one for E3. Yes. And the fact that we're on camera for this one means I can look directly down the barrel <laughs> and get mm-hmm. on my soapbox here and say yep. that the Schick Hydrobot is the best thing that ever happened to any video game presentation. <laughs> I've never laughed as hard yes. at any joke, deliberate or otherwise, <laughs> that has ever mm-hmm. been presented at any of those presentations. Yep. The, Schick, the fact that they... They gave him big fucking ro- like he's a robot and he's a razor and they gave him muscles. <laughs> we get it. It's for men. Yeah, they really wanted people to want to fuck that razor, didn't they? They were oh, really man. keen on that as a as a thing. Yeah, and they succeeded. I've got the slice marks on my dick to prove it. I went in there when I went on a date with him. I wasn't circumcised. Now people think I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, yeah I would well, love we some, wanna, some co-branding. You do are you, mm. do you want to be surprised or do you want to do you have any ideas off the top of the dome for a you know in the same kind of re- what does it need to be some kind of um some kind of a uh, grooming based item mm. um, fused with a cyborg <laughs> sure. doesn't yeah, it Yeah yeah right we want to have yeah. a lot of grooming at this thing let's bring prince andrew in and and really get the <laughs> grooming levels at E3 way up <laughs> I reckon the, the thing that the things that worked about the Chic Hydrobot are that yep. yes, he was a surprise because you wouldn't think you could make a razor. It was the fact that they took a razor and made him into like an interactable animate human-ish, mm-hmm. but he didn't talk object. So you want. I also that think is- the name is perfect because like yeah. Chic, sure, Chic is the brand. Hydrobot, where's the water come in? What's yeah. hi- is that? It's just a, but it, it it rolls off the tongue. It's beautiful. It's like poetry. It's like the new cellar door. It's the most beautiful phrase in the English language. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> that, we that, need to find a similarly uh, great sounding uh, mascot. That little tiny like portion. Oh god, I hope shit doesn't come out of my nose and whatever during that. I just realized like if I fucking do one of those embarrassing things with like a big fucking booger fly, but whatever. I'm sure I'm fine. How hard deaf is your camera? Well no, it's because I, <laughs> I started thinking about cocaine because and then my nose was like brruh, brruh, because there's a version oh, of language sh- that only marketing people use when they're talking about gamers. Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh. that's the sort yeah, of language yeah. that I would want this mascot for our version of E3 to tap into where the word hydrobot is one of those Mm. things like gamer fuel that comes out of the mouth of some fucking 24 year old asshole who's (laughs) trying to impress a bug yeah, hydrobot. Or you know, they point at him and they go like, "You're a you're a zoomer, right? Tell, give us a word. Give us a word. What are the gamers like?" But this guy's been beating them up right. for years. He doesn't know, so <laughs> he spits out some bullshit like gamer fuel or hydrobot. We need something like that 
for whatever our mascot's going to be. So just put that in the back of your mind. Yeah, while sure. mm-hmm. we decide on the actual uh, brand and the yep. object that will that will be in our thing. Okay, so conceptually, yeah, I think the more we talk, the more we're gonna, the, the, you know, this will kind of come to us over the course of the. It'll all form as we yes. go. Absolutely. Yeah. So mm. conceptually, right, chic is not. Yeah. You know, I started thinking like, should we be using like TikTok or some brand that is very, very zoomery? But chic mm-hmm. is not. Chic is not Gen Z. Chic is, you know, what the eighties. We should be thinking about a brand we can make cool again, like chic did for the Hydrobot. You want to know yeah. what it is? There's a brand <laughs> new app it? that's come out, Tic Tac. And Tic Tacs oh! are our okay. brand that we okay. bring into the modern era by comparing yeah. them to Tic Tac. So it's a bunch of people doing like Tic Tac dances, but they're holding yep. Tic Tac boxes in their hands and shaking them around while they do their big fucking arm dances. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I like the idea that it's an actual like... Yeah, it's a it's a sentient um, packet of Tic Tacs that's yeah, come yeah. to life. Yes. So yes. It's itself yeah. doing the TikTok videos. Yeah, yes, and the, that's the good. little fucking <laughs> the lid of the Tic Tac thing will be the bit that talks. He, and every yeah, time yeah, it talks, yeah, yeah, great. Yes. <laughs> all of yeah. the all of the Tic Tacs inside of it are animate as well. And so every time it opens its mouth to be like, "Hey kids, do the Tic Tac challenge. You got to fucking jam <laughs> okay. as many down your throat as you can." All the little Tic Tacs also have legs and shit, and they come out and they're like, "Help me!" Ah, let me out! And every time it opens it, you can just faintly hear that. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fuck. Oh. What do we call him? What do we call him? Uh, uh, fuck. Um, um, well, I, the one thing that this is missing from general video game branded stuff is that mm-hmm. it's not like offensively male focused. We need it to be something that sounds mm-hmm. as though it isn't aware that women okay. even exist. I've got. I've got a would pitch. Would they be interested in video games? Yep. Mister Tic Tac. <laughs> All right. I think we're halfway there. I think. <laughs> yep. Yep. I like the Mr. part. <laughs> yes. Doesn't get much more masculine than that. That's what well, I was hy- thinking. I'm glad that you're on the same page, Tommy. <laughs> the hydro bot, like hydro is what you need. Like hydration is a good thing for when you're shaving. So like yep. fresh freshness is what you're trying to get from a Tic Tac. Oh. So like yeah. Mr. Fresh. And then something that means fresh mech. What about something like oh, that? Oh, the mm. fresh I mean, can't be a mints. Robot as well. The fresh mints, right? Like the fresh prints, but it's mints. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the video he's doing. That's the video he's yeah, making. Yeah, so he's yeah, doing yeah, like yeah, a sure. parody of the of the song of the Will Smith rap. No, no, yeah. no. That's gotten, his name. And we get Will Smith in to to voice it. To voice mm-hmm. the to voice the Tic Tac bot. Mm-hmm. He's he's the fresh mints of. Uh, fucking smell fair, and to keep the, <laughs> the masculine fresh thing mints going, of clean air. S- s- smell <laughs> fair, you, you smell, smell fair. fairly yeah. good. Smell then you've fair, got yeah, both yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. Smell fair. Yeah, and to yeah. keep the masculine yeah. thing going, he works with DJ Jizzy Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> sure, is that <laughs> great? Okay, yeah, fine, guys. Just I don't know. Just to just to play Devi's advo. Okay, um, fuck cool. off. Now that's, <laughs> now that's masculine. <laughs> now that's a very masculine thing to do, Tommy. You're on the I've right. Got my, I've got my creative hat on. I'm pretending that I'm in the boardroom. Um, I don't know. The, see, the problem when you say fresh mints, yes. I know you're saying M I N T S, but in my head, it just I'm kind of hearing it as M I N C E. I'm mm-hmm. hearing like mm-hmm. fresh ground beef. Just right, I heard and that too. I don't know. First. Is that is. Is mm-hmm. that an issue? Is that an issue for us? Because we could we could pivot into it being a sentient um, um, tub of uh, yeah of like ground pork. No, right. I don't want that. Mm. To avoid confusion, what if we call him Mister Beef? Yeah, that's Would good. That help? Yeah, well, that's that's his like subtitle. The welcome, yeah, the yeah. fresh mints of smell fair, and underneath in brackets, Mister Beef. <laughs> this guy Mr. sucks, Beef. but he's opening the show. <laughs> Yeah. So first first thing when people tune in to our E3 broadcast, which will just be the mm. one broadcast and everyone will join in with that one. That's that's the better world, I think, to have yes. everyone in the one presentation and just go yep. for an hour or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that's open by the Tic Tac thing coming out and being like, I'm not meat. <laughs> you don't know why you said that. <laughs> Because you yeah, weren't part yeah. of the decision making progress yeah, 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 process, and the the name is very clearly written on the giant projector behind right. him. So there's no there's no issues with it being a homonym or whatever. We know he's the fresh <laughs> no. mints of smell. No issues with him being a homonym at all. It's 2021 by this point. It's That's, fine. He can be yeah. what he wants. 
<laughs> I've just realised that you're both actually taking notes on this as we're yep. speaking. This is so deranged. <laughs> I'm not taking notes. I'm actually looking for the next bit because uh, seeing, re- reminding no, ourselves notes. of how uh, male focused a lot of the marketing with this stuff is. Did you mm. see that fucking article that the real, you know, but they're on their way out E3 posted uh, a couple oh. of weeks ago, I guess now. It was a list of games that girls enjoy. Was their language? Oh, I yes. Oh, I, I did not personally see this. No, I did see uh, that. That was pretty fucked. Yeah. Oh no, they did say women in their article. The games we play: twenty-five online games that women enjoy. Mm. I'm going to look up what those games are now, just in case we need to reference them for how when we're making the best version of E3 possible. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. So we got a mascot. Yes. Yeah. Done. What's next? So I, uh, my pitch was going to be, this was going to be my pitch for the first thing we need to think about um, before we think about anything else. But mm. I, I had uh, quite naively forgotten about the need for a mascot. So I'm glad mm. we got to that mm. first. Yep. But um, I think we need to think about the location of this thing because it's traditionally oh. always been held oh. in Los Angeles. This is a chance to, you know, there might be nothing left of that place by the time 2021 rolls around. So mm-hmm. this is an opportunity for... A3 to get on a plane and start broadcasting from somewhere else every year. Okay. Um, okay. What do you guys what do you guys think? Like I didn't have any I didn't have any big thoughts in my head other than just, you know, we we've all been in the past we've had the experience of uh having to watch the presentations from Australia which mm-hmm. you know you know few kind of tough time zone things in there uh-huh. every now and then so very selfishly it's tempting to say that it should just be in Australia every presentation mm. happens at lunchtime great we're not put out <laughs> in any way shape or form whatsoever okay. but is that the best is is Australia the best place for it to happen i don't know i, I want to be fairer and because we're at the beginning of this process here I think to Mm -hmm. give ourselves free reign over what we want to include in this presentation, what if we put it on like a rig, an oil rig, in the middle of international Mm. waters? Okay. Okay. Now, you say the word international there, Adam, and that ties in exactly with what what I was thinking because I was thinking as well time zones, um, how do you get around that, uh, where would you broadcast from that allows you to sort of send the signal across the world simultaneously, I was thinking the International Space Station. Right, right. Right? I can... Now, look, I don't want to be a downer, but Mm -hmm. there's one or two logistical problems I can see happening if that's where we have it. Name one. Just name one. (laughs) We would need (laughs) to get into contact more than likely with Elon Musk to be able to get up there, and I don't want to fucking do that, Uh, to be honest. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Have him being like, oh, you're going to announce a new Deus Ex game? Like, no, fuck off. Not anymore, can't you? Wrecked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I used to love that game. And then it was your little fucking profile picture while you're tweeting about how people shouldn't have... Oh, get out of here. We could, Elon, no, we could just wait watching. until he launches the next Tesla into space and hide the entire cast and crew of E3 in the boot. I guess so. I mean, <laughs> that means, look, you can barely fit one dead body into a boot. I've heard. Mm. So mm. I don't know if we're going to get a whole crew of people into that. But I'm not okay. like I'm not against it, it theoretically, but mm. if we were to set it in space as well, I feel like everybody would be like, "Oh, you know, show us Starfield." And then Bethesda would be like, "Still no, for some reason." Mm. Like, but you're mm-hmm. in space. You should have this time and they'd be like, "Eh, yeah. fuck off." We Bethesda. No, we're showing you S- Skyrim again. Um we're going to show you all of our customers private information. That's we can, our plan for the C3. We're literally showing you the rim of the sky because it's like the edge of the... Go- no, okay. You're right, though. It might be a little expensive to get everyone up into space. I don't mind an oil rig in the middle of international waters, though. But again, <laughs> I don't want to be attracting billionaires like Elon Musk and other people no. who were yeah. tempted by the prospect of there being no laws. No, no, no. I- the international waters is the realm of the pirate. If anything... Mm. We, we're going the other oh, way. Oh, well, you've sold us then. Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone more of an everyman than the pirate who, yeah. you know, yeah. needs to take what only they can get? I don't understand what piracy is, but <laughs> no. I mean, we've we've got to think about it in terms of like if the, if this pitch goes well enough, we you know we potentially find ourselves in the position of being the you know we're the new CEOs. We're going to have to go mm. to this thing 
every year. So, mm. uh, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with just being completely selfish and going just like, where do we just want to go every year? And so that's why Ooh. I'm putting in a vote for either Fiji or Japan. Because also, oh, nice. if, this is, if we're going to yeah. stay in the same yeah. time of year that E3 traditionally is, guess what? That's Australian winter. Mm. And, you know, playing some demos on a beautiful beach, sipping a sipping a branded drink out of a <laughs> coconut, I don't mind it. I, I, I don't think I'd mind doing yeah. that every year. Okay. A little little bit of monster energy with like a little fucking umbrella in it. <laughs> <laughs> Having a sip of yeah. that. That'd be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, I've been distra- I'm going to stop looking now because I've been distracting myself for ages trying to look for this fucking list of games that women enjoy according to E3. And every fucking article about everything now is just, well, that's too bright. But it's just a list of <laughs> tweets that other people have done about the news. Oh, uh, yeah. And there's none of the fucking actual news in there. Let's get rid of that. You're not right. allowed to tweet about or at this E3. The news gets out only through us. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're I'm sick of, I'm sick of seeing the <laughs> main, the main avenue of promotion and participation yeah. in this event is bad. Yeah. And imagine if we got to control the message, though. We run the media. And any news mm. about E3 that we're not directly responsible for releasing, we call fake. And we we shout at the journalists and all that shit. Let's Is go this, fucking full. And we only we only allow one person in to report on what we're doing at E3. Yeah, Dennis Rodman. He's the only person <laughs> yeah. that's allowed to oh, come okay. through and have access to the game. And okay. whenever <laughs> when he goes back out and the rest of the journalists are asking him what he saw at E3, he's like, "Yeah, man, I saw at E3. I saw a bunch of shit over there." <laughs> and nobody can fucking understand him at all. He's forgotten yes. half of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's the king of blocking yeah. questions. He's just slapping them down. <laughs> he's the, he's the, yeah, okay. All right, Dennis Rodman okay, so is no the head media. of what? PR? No <laughs> me- so it's, it's us, it's us on a beach PR? in Fiji with a handful of developers and Dennis Rodman. Yeah, DRPR. Yeah. Okay, all right. And, and Will Smith Tic Tac Box or whatever we ended up calling him. Yes, yeah. yes. Tic Tac well. Box is, I think, the hilarious pun title we settled on. <laughs> we can probably all fit into one room in a resort at this rate, so yeah. we'll save a lot of money there. We don't need nice. to put everyone up individually. We just get one yeah. one big penthouse suite. I'll sleep on the floor. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> more, it's more big than, of you. I, I, rather than Dennis, well, it's a little of him. That's how he fits on the floor. But I, with yeah. the, I don't want necessarily, look, nothing against Dennis Rodman, but I want to just be able to put out our version of, of what we want people to see. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. I'd still so like him to be there. Maybe he's just We there can to invite hang out. him. We can invite yeah. whoever. Well, he could be he our could be hilarious a- celebrity uh uh you know person who comes along and doesn't really right. like games but is getting paid enough to pretend to have a thin veneer of enthusiasm for about th- uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, we can get him to come out and promote NBA, NBA 2K21 mm-hmm. and he can explain how that game will contain no basketball for a very good reason. <laughs> yes. Yes. That, that can be what he does. And also he'll have to be like, I haven't played basketball in fucking 20 years. I don't know how long, but a long time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like the awkward celebrity thing. Maybe we should get a bunch of them. Like when Vin Diesel yes. and um, whoever else Ooh. it was with him who's in those Fast and the Furious movies came Michelle out. Michelle Rodriguez, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, yeah. I love the idea of this Fast and the Furious video game. And you could yeah. tell that they, in the back of their heads, absolutely did not. Or the front of their mm-hmm. fucking heads. <laughs> yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, where the face is. Um, yeah. Okay. Well- we don't have to pitch necessarily a, t- a celeb tie-in, but wh- who would, who else do we want? Are we starting we with Dennis Rodman <laughs> as the king, as the, you know, as yeah. our as our father of this tr- this branching uh, family tree? I guess so. We could have like the the Tic Tac thing be like, "Hey, welcome to E three, everybody! The coolest, freshest uh, show in the world." And if you mm-hmm. if your breath sucks, blah blah blah, take a Tic Tac, and then Dennis Rodman comes in and dunks a basketball into his mouth. And yes. He says, Shut oh. up, Tic Tac. You're old news. Dennis Rodman's here, <laughs> and then the, the Tic Tac from like with a basketball in his mouth is like, Dennis Rodman, you're literally old news. Nobody talks about you anymore. I don't know why Ben brought you up. And then <laughs> we get into the show with, I guess Microsoft tends to be the first one. Mm. Mm. A typically three. So we'll have the big ones. You know, the big players still involve Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo and all of them need to be, well, I guess that's it. They need to be there, mm-hmm, but we'll mm-hmm. give them like, 
they need to just fucking get to it. I reckon we'd make it. <laughs> can, okay. just- can I just quickly say on the celeb uh, appearance thing, mm. yeah. I do like this idea that we just kind of get whoever we can get. We throw out kind of a blanket of set of invites and part of the deal of presenting at our new E3 is that whoever we can get, you have to implement them in one of the games that you're showing in one in in, in one way or another. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that our fly, we're paying all these costs so that it's not wasted. So, for example, one of the few people that's um, gotten back to us is Warwick Kappa. So, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ubisoft, you've got to somehow chuck Warwick Kappa into the new Assassin's Creed. That's Ooh, part of the I deal saw. of Honestly, presenting this game I don't at think, E3. I don't think Ubisoft would have any problems giving someone like Warwick Kappa, say, a leadership role at that company. <laughs> I think he would do just fine over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what? I was Because what would the appearance fee for a normal celebrity in real life be? Quite high, right? But not a lot of people are there yeah. in real life, so we don't need them there. We could get everybody through Cameo. Cameo is huge. <gasps> oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. And they announce together all of the people we get from Cameo, the sequel to Cameo Elements of Power. Oh, That's my God. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that Here is, we go. That is a brain wave go. and a half knock. That might be the best thing you've ever come up with. So who, no, who do we... <laughs> I'm a genius, and I've seen all of your uh, stand-up comedy <laughs> shows. At- <laughs> so we very quickly went from planning the logistics to just now straight up pitching our own game in the middle yeah, of yeah. this planning meeting. Well, we got to fix E3, right, which means we have to make better yeah. games. We're all a bit jaded right, with what right. the announcements have been <laughs> software-wise as well. So, of course, we got to do this. Well, exactly, Mm. because part of the problem with E3 over the last few years as well is that they'll announce a game that isn't coming out for fucking ages. Like Bethesda, Mm. we were saying before, announced Mm. that they're making Elder Scrolls 6, but they're like, one day, Mm -hmm. So, and like Last of Us 2 was going for like four years before it came out, same with Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm sick of that. So we need to make a blanket rule that every game that is being announced needs to come out at the minute it's being announced. Sure. Wow. Shadow yeah. drop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I yeah, will yeah. say I I do agree with that, but I I you know I'm a bit the opposite to you, Knox. I don't mind hearing about plans that a company has for far far in the future. So I agree with you. Everything should come out the moment it's announced at E3, except for we have one panel that is okay. um, announcements of uh, ideas that developers have thought of that morning as they're walking to the presentation. Yes. So we just sure. have an open yes. forum where it's just like someone who's just like literally like they've walked in off the street and gone, oh, I was just in the dunny and I was like thinking, you know, I'm taking a piss and uh, – uh, <laughs> Piss, piss simulator. I'll probably, you know, I'll refine oh. this into something. You probably won't. It'll materialize. It'll turn into something else and change over time. But in ten years' time, you'll see something and you'll know that the genesis <laughs> of it was born today. Piss simulator. I think <laughs> there is a lot of entertainment value in watching people uh, go into detail about things that they haven't thought about previously and have just come <laughs> up with. I think that's a very entertaining thing to watch. <laughs> people trying to explain ideas that they haven't fully thought out, but they're yep. just kind of winging. I think that could be fun. <laughs> you know what? We should get everyone who we do a cameo, you know, do to, so like we hire Bam Majira to fucking mm-hmm. announce uh, uh, Lost Odyssey 2. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Anyway, but okay. he has to do that. And so he's confused about it. He's like, oh, hey, what's up? I'm Bam Majira. I miss Ryan Dunn. And then mm-hmm. every cameo that we get, we also ask them to describe a game they just came up with too to add on to your thing, Tommy. So- Okay. Oh. Yep. There's a bunch of games being thought of, but also half mm-hmm. of them are coming out. See what there's I mean? There's no in between. There's there's nothing yep. that's coming out in 18 months or in two yep. years. It's either it's either out in five milliseconds or yep. it's out in two decades. There's yeah. no Perfect. Or never. Just never. Or never. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, what was the dragon one? Um, fucking scale bound. S- scale bound. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. It's that in there as well. There was that okay. one wild. That never came out. There's a bunch yep. of those fucking ones. So mm. uh, you're right that part of the fun of E3 is seeing those things and being like, okay, sure. Mm-hmm. So, mm. yeah, I don't mind that at all. All right. So for game announcements, we've got either things that are coming out that day and they have to tell us, you know, that, that they've got them. We have them in a little mm-hmm. sealed envelope and we bring them out. Yep. And a lot of people, you know what, around the, because Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo do their things separately... Uh, and then, like, even Ubisoft and whatever have their own things. I think that fuels a lot of the argument 
around the console wars and shit that you see online, which isn't necessarily a positive or a fruitful argument that people have. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the idea of bringing everyone into the one presentation gets rid of that. But at the same time, it is kind of fun to watch. So I would, if we could, maybe suggest that we fuel that somewhat by every, Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo all have a representative on the stage mm -hmm. okay, for the entire presentation. And as they announce, they announce one game each, bup, bup, bup. And there's like a clapper meter, like at a bad comedy show. Yes. Uh, and yep. whoever gets yep. the most claps wins. Whoever gets the second most claps, they don't win, but they're fine. Whoever gets the least, they have to delete all of their games and, th and, and break every one of their consoles. <laughs> like, that's the reason people say the console wars are stupid is because they're meaningless. <laughs> Make them meaningful. And then that's a fun argument to I've have. Got a, I've got a twist on the pitch. I just watched before, uh, before <laughs> recording uh, a video from 1995 uh, from E3. It was the Mortal Kombat panel slash announcement. And the witch, that was the, the one. one. Mortal Kombat. I think it was Mortal Kombat Sorry? 3. Can you say it a bit louder? Mortal Kombat! I can three. hear you that time. Sorry, I just wasn't picking you up. <laughs> um, and they had three people in costume or four or five people burst onto right. stage and have a fight. So do we have Sick. people dressed up as Mario, uh, dressed up as Master Chief, dressed up uh, as um, Nathan Drake? Uh, like <laughs> Crash Bandicoot, I guess. Yeah, yeah but he's and fight each now. other. Mm -hmm. No, I think I want it to be the real people who actually have their livelihoods on the line who we're seeing. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. I'd rather see the actual uh, terror. Because, so, like, all, all of the, like, The Voice and fucking American... All those shows that are competitions mm. of only one person gets to win this thing, part of the thing of that show is that you, you're mainly watching The Loser, you know? Right, uh, sure. Not a lot of people right. give a shit after Guy Sebastian has won Australian Idol. They give a shit mm -hmm. about Shannon Noll because he lost. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I want to see. I, I just want to make it a bit more vital, like that. It doesn't have to be. I a don't real mind fight. that. Also, the concept mm -hmm. of like, and it's like a, it's like a reversed pop, v reverse pop idol in that we're taking someone who's already rich and famous and stripping everything from them. Right. right. Yes. Right. That's a Which great. I'm in full angle of, for yeah. it mm. as well. Mm. In this modern like eat the rich era, we mm -hmm. can make a whole bunch of money in international waters from people watching this and buying Tic Tacs. Whilst yep. at the same time pretending as though we hold the, you know, hot girl on Twitter socialist ideals that a lot of companies <laughs> yeah. pretend they hold now. But we, and we can Are follow in those footsteps. <laughs> Are you worried though, Adam, that we might as uh, CEOs of this uh, brave new version just, of this company that we- Just to, mm? to be clear, we will not be putting our own names as CEOs. We will make a shell company and mm. someone right, else right. Will, will be the fall but, guy for uh, this. A Cooper shell company. My point is I- <laughs> yeah, four guys. I think the, in, the game. in <laughs> yes, <laughs> in some in some form or another, I, I feel like we will come under fire. There'll be accusations that some of these companies are buying claps <laughs> in the audience. Like I think this very yeah. quickly oh, sure. will will turn will turn murky, and and eh. unfortunately, we're the ones that are going to have to answer to that. Mm. I know, but whatever. If I didn't want to come under fire and have accusations <laughs> made at me, I would have lived a very different life up until this point. <laughs> so, uh, it's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. We just... Yeah, we're on Fiji. We're on an island in Fiji. What do we care if people Who think gives this whole thing's shit? corrupt? And, yeah. yeah. And if Nintendo wants to buy those claps, then good for them. Mm. Yeah. If they... Guess what, guys? The game of E3 this year, a fucking um, full-priced... Not remastered in any way, shape, or form. Re-release of Mario Brothers Two. Nothing yeah. added to it. It's eighty dollars. <laughs> I mean, sort of the idea of this is that we're meant to be coming up with zany situations rather than things yeah. that would actually happen, right? That they'll actually yeah, do. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> All right. That uh, that brings us to the end of uh, our presentation for PAX. Thank you guys so much for watching us, whether you're an existing fan of the show or if you just came and found us for the first time. We appreciate you uh, checking this out. Yeah, if Thank you want to, so much. <laughs> if you want to hear the rest of that discussion, it went for a little bit longer than uh, what you just saw. You can hear an audio version of it uh, on our Bandcamp page, where filthycasualspod.bandcamp.com, and the rest of our show is up on filthycasuals.com.au. It's a it's a podcast about video games. We got a regular podcast. 
We got these special podcasts that we do. We got a Patreon podcast mm-hmm. as well. That's it. But I, I put my fourth finger up as though there was more, but that's it. So this is the end of this bit, but you can get more, like Ben said, at filthycasuals.com.au. Happy to muddy the message at the end there, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. We've run out of our allotted time at PAX is why we're leaving, by the way. See you later. (laughs) See ya.